One of the most often requested recipe out of all the requested recipe you guys have sent comment for. Chicken masala. Stay tuned, I'm gonna show you how to make the most amazing chicken masala you've ever made. Remember, if you like our recipe, subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up, and don't forget to ring the bell. Stay tuned, we're gonna show you exactly how to make this. All right, friends, well, let me show you how easy it is to make that recipe. Boy, if there's one recipe that has been requested more than any other recipe, is the chicken masala. So I'm gonna show you how to make it. It's all about the sauce. It's always about the sauce. Let me show you how to do this. We're gonna start with the sauce and then we'll put the chicken in the oven. And I'm gonna do it with the rosemary, garlic, roasted potatoes and carrots. Very easy to do, eh? Everything I do is easy. Like I said, it's all about the sauce, friends. So let's make that sauce going. I use a saucier, a reduction saucepan. It's a little easier to make it. You don't have one of those, just use a regular pan. We're gonna start with a roasted garlic olive oil. We're gonna let that get hot. While this is happening, I'm gonna introduce the ingredients. This is mise en place, remember? Mise en place, you gotta get everything ready. And then you can do the recipe with us. All right, so bacon. If you don't have bacon, you don't want bacon, don't put it in. Onion, shallots. If you don't have shallots, don't worry. Mushrooms. Today we got sage and a little bit of tarragon. I like those two together, they're wonderful. You don't have one or the other, don't worry about it, you got time. You can use rosemary, you can use uh, oregano. That's okay. I like to make it with sage and a little bit of tarragon, but make it with whatever makes you happy. Garlic, we got our garlic puree. You don't have garlic puree, just make a chopped garlic. A little bit of cream. Then we got a, the black mission fig balsamic vinegar that we use all the time, it's really amazing. A little bit of masala wine, I'm using a dry masala because my vinegar is sweet. If your vinegar is sour, then you better use a sweet masala. Mine is dry. And a little bit of roasted garlic olive oil. All right, friends, we're gonna get going. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get a, uh, we're gonna saute the bacon first. Remember, bacon is the only thing that goes before the, uh, <laughs> it goes before the onion. Otherwise, onion is always the first. Always number one is onion unless there is bacon. That's a lot, sounds like a poem. <laughs> bacon is always number one. No, no, onion is always number one unless there is bacon. Okay, yeah, that's all there is to it. And why is that? Why do we put the bacon first? Well, because we render the fat and we use the fat that has rendered from the bacon and we put the onion in there. Okay, now, if you have... Uh, Onion and shallots, do you put them together? Nope. The onion takes a little bit longer to caramelize than the shallots. So you first do the onion and then you put the shallots. And if you only have onion, then don't worry about it, it's fine. If you only have shallots, then that's fine too. There's nothing wrong with it, okay? We gotta make it easy. Go. Remember folks, this is just a little bit of onion here. I'm making just a little sauce. I'm just doing two chicken breasts, so I don't need a lot of sauce. Actually, you know what? When you make a sauce like this, my friends, you can make that sauce in big quantity and freeze it. Yeah, it'll freeze for a long, long, long time. We want to caramelize this before I put in the shallots. When I got a couple of minutes, I wanted to show you, friends, how we keep our herbs. But you know what? I'm going to do it later. I want to show you because a lot of people have always asking me, how do you keep herbs fresh? I got a system, it's fabulous. It'll keep your herbs for a week, 10 days. Some of them, two weeks when you buy fresh herbs. Otherwise, you buy them, if you don't sow them correctly two days later, they're no good for nothing. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to keep them nice and fresh. It's really cool. I got a really cool technique. That's the kind of technique we use when you're in a restaurant business. How do you keep things fresh? You can't be buying things every day. So you're looking right now, friends, and you notice then the, um, oh, I forgot to tell you, in the mise en place, we have a little bit of beef stock. It's on the stove over there, we got the beef stock. So we'll go back, we'll talk about this in a minute, but right now, let's not worry about it. I just wanna make sure I don't forget to tell you for the mise en place, eh? We're waiting for the onion to caramelize just a bit. And I tell you what, we're waiting for the caramelized onion. We're gonna start the chicken breast. Let's just do that. And the chicken breast, I could saute them in, uh, in olive oil, but it'll burn if I go in the oven to cook the chicken breast. So I'm gonna use a little bit of clarified butter. And, uh, and we have a video on clarified butter. It's in the essential, I want you to go and look at it. Because it's really important to make it. You know, if you make clarified butter, 
folks, it, it stays for a long, long time. You can keep it at room temperature for four or five months if you did it correctly, or you can keep it in a refrigerator for up to a year without any problem. Curfi butter is butter, then you brought the oil, you remove the milk solid, so all you have is butter fat. It's got a really high smoke point, and you can keep it for a long time, okay? Now you guys have been watching my channel long enough, I think you've graduated and you can use it. All right, so let's lower this a little bit, it's going a little fast. Now we're gonna put some uh, shallots in there. Now I'm gonna show you something really cool. You see the bottom of the pot? We got a little caramelization. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with it. This is really cool. When you got bottom, you gotta check the bottom of the pan constantly, friends. Make sure it doesn't burn. And you shake it. I mean, I don't mind at all a little bit of caramelization in the bottom. I don't mind that at all. All right, so look, we got some nice colors in the bottom of the pan right there. We got some nice color. Remember, it's all about the sauce. We gotta concentrate on that sauce. Now we're gonna put the mushrooms. And we're gonna saute the mushrooms. We're gonna saute the mushrooms until we extract all of their water. And then we'll put in our vinegar and we're putting our wine and we're putting the rest of the ingredient. And, and what we need to do is to get rid of all the water in the mushroom and for that, we're gonna put some uh, Mediterranean sea salt. That's gonna help us extract the water in a mushroom and a little bit of salt. And we're gonna let that cook for a second. Not worry about it for a second. Check the bottom of the pot constantly. Check the bottom of the pot constantly so it doesn't burn on us. And we're gonna go to a medium heat so it's not too hot, otherwise we will burn the bottom of the pot really easily. Let's get into that chicken here, my friends. Now, like I said, I'm doing on a clarified butter. It's hot. Now, clarified butter, we can get a temperature up to 400, 450 degrees without any burning it. So I wanted to make sure it's not hot. I got two breasts of chicken, a little salt and pepper. We're gonna get some nice golden brown color to it. Salt and pepper. We're gonna put them in there. We're gonna get them golden brown while the sauce is doing its thing. Put them in a the pan, and like we do the steak, don't touch them. Leave them alone. Leave them alone, my friends. Little more salt and pepper on the other side. Leave them alone. We're looking for some beautiful color. Leave them alone. Don't touch them. Everybody wants to play with them. <laughs> so look. Let's look at what we got here. See, the mushroom is starting to release all of their water. And then we're gonna do some roasted potato. It's a lot of stuff to do, but the good thing is if you're at home and you're cooking with the kids, one should do the chicken, the other one should do the sauce, or everybody in the same pot. <laughs> so look, 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 you see all that steam right there? That's the water coming out of the mushroom. Water is the enemy of food, folks. In a minute, you're gonna see the bottom of my pot. You notice, by the way, I'm using a wooden spoon. I like to scrape the bottom of my pot. You see right there, look. See right there, I don't know if you can see. You may not be able to see because the camera can only be in so many places at the same time. But let me tell you, folks, this is important. We're gonna take a little spatula right there. I'm gonna scrape the, bottom, the side of the pot. Look, look, look. You see what we're doing, friends? We're shaking, and look. Let's look at the bottom of the pot. We're looking good, you see? You see? Now, if I have a little uh, burnt bits in there, I don't mind. I don't mind a little caramelization, you see? It's starting to smell delicious, my friends. It really is. All right, let's see how we're doing with the chicken. The chicken, 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 chicken. Ah, I want some beautiful color. Just a little bit more. I said don't touch it. I didn't touch it. I didn't touch it for at least like a minute and three quarter. All right, let's see what we got here, friends. Let's reduce the heat so I don't want it to be too hot. So now, now we can put up, uh, look, 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 the mushroom. I released all of their water, friends, you see? Mushroom have released most of their water. It's already smelling beautiful. That's a nice base right there. It's a beautiful base, right? So now we're gonna put the, uh, the sage and, uh, and a little bit of tarragon. If you just have sage, just tarragon, put whatever herbs you want. Remember, it's not written in stone somewhere. Oh my goodness, it's gotta put sage in there. No, it's your recipe, put whatever you want. Somebody doesn't like it, tell them to go eat somewhere else. All right, let's look. Oh yeah, look, 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 look. Look at this, friends. Look at this. Look at this, friends. Look at this. Is that gorgeous or what? So now, friends, we can go in the oven. It's not gonna take very long. I know they're very big, but maybe 10 minutes. 
Okay, we're going to take them and we're going to cook them until they're nice and beautiful juicy. I got my oven preheated already. So here we go. Hasta luego. <laughs> now let's concentrate on the sauce, my friend. All right? Now, see, look, the mushrooms are released 90% of their water. Mushrooms are going to have a nice texture. Why do we want to release the water in the mushroom? Because water tastes like nothing. And I don't want water in my food. You put water in food if you want. I don't want it. Take the, mush the, the, the onion out of here. What else do I got? Okay, so now I can concentrate on the sauce. A little bit of garlic. This is my garlic puree. Eh? You guys have made that. If you're not, you go to Essential on our website. Uh, on our website. On a YouTube channel under the Essential. And it's garlic puree. You don't want to use garlic puree? Don't worry. Just use chopped garlic. A couple of chopped garlic. Don't worry. It's fine. It's okay, so now we're going to put it in. How long do we cook the garlic for? How long? What do you think? We cook it until we smell it. The second we smell it, it's releasing this beautiful aroma, and I want to capture that aroma. Because I don't want to burn garlic. I want an aroma, aromatic, fragrant, floral garlic. Right now, right now, right now. I'm going to put the balsamic vinegar in here. This is the fig balsamic vinegar, folks. If you've never had this before, uh, I'm telling you, it's amazing, okay? If you've never had it before, you should try it. A fig vinegar or a good balsamic vinegar. This is 18 years old. It's a beautiful vinegar, okay? We're going to put the vinegar, and then we're going to put... My vinegar doesn't need to reduce because it's already 18 years old. It's already reduced. Dry masala. Ooh, be careful. Don't get them drunk. A little masala wine. And I, like I said, I'm using a dry masala wine. Okay? Dry masala wine. Because my vinegar is sweet. If my vinegar was sour, I would use a sweet masala wine, okay? I'm gonna show you the herbs. I don't wanna to forget to show you that. What do we have here? We're gonna take a really quick, we're gonna put a little bit of beef stock now. Now, you probably all have seen my beef stock recipe. If you haven't seen it, you gotta go on the, on the essential again, for instance, do it. Now, you don't wanna worry about making your own beef stock, don't worry, just buy a good beef broth somewhere. Okay, there's a lot of good beef, beef stock recipe out there. There's a lot. Of, just buy one is, if you don't mind. L low sodium, friends. Low sodium. Low sodium. Please, please buy low sodium. And some of them are like four, five, six hundred milligrams of sodium per cup. So you want to try to buy something uh, delicious. And if you've never made your own, you should try one time. It's not that difficult, I promise you. And you can keep it in the freezer for 17 years. Look at this. Look at this, this sauce right there. We're going to fix the consistency in a minute. I'll show you how to do that. We're gonna put a little more salt and pepper in there because I don't have any. Just a little bit. We just added a little bit on the mushroom, but that's nothing. Before I continue with this, my friends, I'm gonna do the potatoes really quick, but I wanna show you real quick how do we keep our fresh herbs. Because you buy herb at the store, and, and if, you don't, if you don't do something with it, if you don't keep them correctly, they're gonna go bad in no time at all. So I'm gonna show you what we have in here, okay? This is my herb, my herb uh, uh, container. It's like a type of wear type containers, you know, it's aromatic. I put a towel on top, just a moist towel, not wet, moist, right? Then I put a pepper towel. Underneath the pepper towel, I got my herbs. You see, I got my parsley, I got, I keep my shives in a container because they stay nicer. And then my thyme and my, uh, my rosemary and my oregano and then, and then the Italian parsley and then the regular parsley right here. Underneath this, my friends, if you notice right here, I don't know if you can see, but I got a pepper towel. So pepper towel, herbs, one more pepper towel, and they'll dry, dry pepper towel. I put double, double pepper towel, right? Go right there. And then I put my moist towel right there. I put my moist towel. And then I close my container. Now, if you notice, my container on the inside, it's wet because of the uh, uh, condensation from the herbs and the, and the rag. And, and I close it. See? Close, 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 close. I even remove the air by pushing it down. And this, my friends, will keep my fresh herbs for long, 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 long time. I got no room in here. So you know what? I'll put it here. I'll put it back later. Uh, <laughs> Um, it keeps, uh, I got herbs under my fingernails now. It stays for a long time. I promise you the parsley, two weeks. The, the sage, the rosemary, the thyme, the oregano, 10 days. 
Uh, some of them, like the basil, you can't do anything with it. Some of the chives, maybe not so much either. But uh, that's a good way to keep your fresh herb. Keep it in the fridge somewhere where there's room. <laughs> I don't have room in mine. Let me do something real quick. I got the chicken in the oven. I got to move, my friends. I'm going to do the potatoes, okay? So the potatoes, let me put them right here so we can follow with the camera, okay? This is what I'm doing here, friends. I got little potatoes, then we've cut uh, in, in little pieces, and if, they, if they're small, I leave them alone. Eh? And then I got carrots, then I cut. Uh, I'll have to show you how to do that. I have to do a video on cutting vegetables, and I always forget to do it, but I'm gonna do it. There's so much to do sometime, you know? I don't have time to do it all, but I will show you, I promise you. By the time I'm done, everybody, in America, we'll know how to quick, the cook, we'll know how to cook. I promise you, it's not difficult. Anybody can do it, okay? Cooking is not rocket science. Everybody can be a good cook. Now, not everybody can be a good singer or, or a, a musician. Or, that requires talent. Cooking requires understanding the ingredients. It's not that big of a deal. Everybody can do it, I promise you, okay? Now, we're not talking about becoming a master chef. We're talking about becoming good home cooks. So here's what we're going to do. In those, um, those potatoes that I already cooked, so what did I do? I cooked the potato in water, and I cooked the carrots in a separate water. And when they were cooked, I took them out, I let them cool. The carrots, I put them in nice water real quick, because otherwise they, they wouldn't keep the color nice and neat like that, right? Okay, so it's a very simple dish. We're gonna take a little bit of chopped rosemary, right? And then we're gonna put some of the garlic. Some of the garlic puree then we have. Little garlic puree right there. Yeah. And a little bit of garlic oil, garlic olive oil, yeah? And we're gonna mix all this together until we have a nice mixture. If you don't have garlic olive oil, just put a beautiful olive oil, okay? You don't have to put garlic olive oil. But if you have it, why not, right? And then you're gonna take it, your potatoes, then I cooked, and your carrots, then I cooked. So now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take some black pepper, a little more coarse, and a little more salt. We're gonna mix all this up. We're gonna mix all this up, friends. And then we're gonna take a spatula, and we're gonna mix all this up, and then we're gonna bake them in the oven, friends. We're just gonna bake them like this in the oven. And let me tell you, those potatoes, my friends, are gonna be amazing. We're gonna put them in the oven with the chicken. And the chicken is cooking, it's gonna be ready in two minutes. While the chicken, let me put all this stuff out of here. When the chicken is continue cooking, which is gonna, won't be very long, to tell you the truth, it won't be very long. When the chicken is ready, what we're gonna do, we're gonna check it. I'm gonna clean up everything, and I'll be back in one second to finish the sauce. All right, well, the chicken is now ready, friends. I'm gonna take it out of the oven, and we're gonna let it rest a little bit. You should always let it rest a little bit. And remember, you take something out of the oven, what do you do? Leave a, a towel on the pan, otherwise, hey, hey, hoo -hoo. <laughs> You know, it wouldn't be the first time. You would think, after 50 years in the kitchen, that I don't make mistakes like that. I still do. I think it's a human thing. <laughs> it has to be, right? Because otherwise you would think a chef has been in the kitchen 50 years, doesn't burn himself anymore. All right? <laughs> I still do. Every so often. Not often, but I still do. Too many times. We'll take the chicken out. Whenever you take something out of the, out of the oven that is hot, you put a towel on here. Okay? It's an unspoken rule in a commercial kitchen. You gotta put a towel and take something out of the oven because you know it's hot. The next guy may not know it's hot. So now, what do we do here, friends? The sauce, let's look at the sauce. Sauce is good, but you know what? The sauce is a little liquid. So what do we do? If we have a, a beurre manier, we can take it. If we have a cook roux, we can take it. But let's say that we don't have a cook roux. We're gonna make one of those so you guys can use it. But let's say we don't have any. What do you got? Flour right now? No, it's too late for flour. Flour needs to cook, we're ready to eat. So we don't want that, so we're gonna put a bit of cornstarch slurry. Arrowroot, tapioca powder. You can use a bunch of thickener, but co cornstarch is the easiest one. This is cornstarch and water. A mixture, very simple. You put a little bit in there, folks. Very little. You don't need to put a lot in there, just a little bit. Make sure the sauce is hot when you do this. But so then you know what to put in. Because remember, cornstarch only really works if the mixture is boiling. So you put a little bit first, bring the sauce to boil, bring the sauce to boil, and then see how much you need. Be careful, just put a little bit first. Don't go out there and putting too much and then what do you gotta do? Let's say you put too much, what do you do? 
Don't worry, just put a little more stock in there. Okay, you could also put in a bit of wine in there. You can put a little masala in there. It'll be perfectly fine because masala doesn't need to be cooked, remember? So put a little bit first, and then let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. And let me tell you something. Just a little bit I put in. Look, look, you see? A little bit I put in, friends. It's enough to do to have done it. So the chicken is resting. You got to let it rest. You got to let it rest. There's no question about it. You don't want to cut a dish. Just a few minutes. Look, that sauce is perfect. What else could make the sauce better? What do you think? Uh, yes, you're right. Butter. Nothing wrong with that, friends. How do, why do we put the butter at the end? Because we're turning the heat off. And we put the butter at the end. Because butter, don't be afraid now. <laughs> I am not afraid. Uh, you put the butter at the end so it does not separate, my friends. Remember, butter is made of three components. Butter, fat, milk, solid, and water. Butter will separate and become oily. But if we do this right away right now, it will just barely melts. You see? Barely, barely, barely melts. And that sauce right here, my friends. Oh, yeah, baby. That sauce right there, my friend. It's going to be just amazing. All right, that's, that's it. Right there, right there, right there, right there. Let's not touch it. Let's not touch it. Let's just take that chicken breast out. Take the rag out of here now and put it right back <laughs> so you don't forget it. We're going to take the chicken breast out and we're going to cut it. Now we're going on a cutting board and we're going to cut that chicken breast. See, we've got a beautiful seal on the other side. Some people always say to me, how come you don't seal the other side? You seal one side. And then you put the other one down in the pan, and look how beautiful it comes out on the other side. You see? So we got a nice thing, nice color. If you are not sure of the temperature, you want to cook it to 155. Don't forget, put a thermometer. Don't be afraid to put a thermometer in there. There's nothing wrong with it. You want to keep it to 145. You still want it to be nice and moist. You don't want it to be all dried out. Oh, you know what we got, folks? We got to, I, I got to take this down because that's the only one I got. I got to take this potato out of the oven, my friend. There you go. The potatoes are there. We're going to put them right here. Let's not worry about the potato right now. Let's go back on a cutting board and let's cut that beautiful chicken breast. I like to, to be cut it nice and thin so it's delicate. I like to make some nice cuts and so it's delicate. And it's not too thick so it's more delicate, you see, friends? And if we look, I want to show you in a second so you can see it. If we look right here, look how beautiful and nice and moist the chicken is. You see? You see right here, probably you can see it from... From the top, or you can see it from the side. You see how nice and moist that is, friends? We don't want it to be a dry chicken. Dry chicken is overcooked chicken. It's not good, my friends. We don't want overcooked chicken. See what I'm doing? By the way, I'm cutting it nice and small, and I'm pushing back a little bit. That's all. A little bit of an angle, and I'm pushing back just slightly, right? So now, just like that, very simple. We're going to take it. We're going to put it on the plate. Let me push this out of the way. Clean up my rag right there. We're gonna take, we got a serving plate right there. I'm gonna put just a little bit of sauce underneath. Okay, you can put the sauce on top, you can put it underneath, you can put it wherever it makes you happy. So now look, you see? Let's put it in like this, my friends. Let's put just a little bit more sauce on that side right there. Just a little bit so we cover the whole side. Just like this, you see? Look how beautiful that chicken is. Whoa. Well, that's going to be some serving, let me tell you. I don't know who's coming over for dinner, but man, that's a chicken breast serving, let me tell you. And it's so moist. This is going to melt in your mouth, my friends. Right, what do you think? Just like this. See, very simple, right? That was not complicated, right? What do you think? Easy to do? Now, let's take some of those roasted potatoes right there with a nice spoon or a tongue, whatever we can do. Just put a little bit of those, oh, this is hot. Take some of those roasted potatoes in there and just, let's put them in, just like this, friends. Just like this, very simple. Right? We don't have to do anything fancy here. Well, just like that, a couple of potatoes. There you go, we can organize them if we have time. I don't have time because it's hot and I'm hungry, <laughs> and here we have it. Because I'm grabbing the tongue the wrong way. Just organize it however you want it. I'm probably gonna organize it a little bit different, but when we have a little minute, I maybe I put the carrots all the way around it. 
But here it is, just put a little bit of uh, uh, beautiful parsley leaves on top. Just very simple, right, my friend? Don't do anything, anything fancy. But still, take the time to make it look pretty, okay? Very simple. You know what we should do? And I'll probably do it in a minute. We're going to take some potato and put all the carrots around it. I think that'll be real pretty, real simple. But that's how simple it is. Friends, I want you to make this recipe. It's really simple. It's all about the sauce. Make it with steak. Make it with lamb. Make it with beef, anything. That sauce is what it's all about. Chicken masala, the easiest recipe in the world. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, if you like it, subscribe to our channel. We need new subscribers. Ring the bell so you get a notification every week when I do a new video. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you all next week.